On the Colorado Plateau, Navajo lands of northwestern Arizona, there's a hill slope at 7,624 feet of elevation where, during heavy rainfall or rapid snowmelt, flow would drain south and then east into a notch, falling into a side canyon that then drains to the north and northwest, into a larger side canyon going southwest, joining Dow's Hybido Canyon. which drains down to Segi Canyon. And these are really spectacular headwater canyons cutting into the Colorado Plateau. So we started in a, a little patch of pinyon juniper forest and, and dropped into one of these canyons. Where it flows down Segi Canyon, we've got a pretty beautiful little creek and riparian zone, real precious area in this otherwise semi-arid region. Here, many larger canyons converge and then flow to the east. To where we have our first road crossing near Cayenta. See, it's a pretty small channel. Beautiful open area. Here, the road to the north goes into the amazing Monument Valley area. Flow then continues down Church Rock Valley to where it eventually becomes Chinley Creek. Not much water here in this arid region, but sometimes you get some raging flash flood flows. Flow is then to the north to where it joins the San Juan River, then goes west flows through some entrenched meanders known as the Goosenecks. Incredible place. We then continue to traverse the Colorado Plateau next to Lake Powell and the Glen Canyon Dam, the first of several major dams along this route. There were a lot of dams on the clockwise spiral route as well. Now we are on the Colorado River and entering the world famous Grand Canyon. You know, I was just trying to find what might be the most spiraled route, but going from those headwater canyons, Navajo lands, to the San Juan River and the Goosenecks to, to here, we've really stumbled upon a, upon a pretty incredible scenic journey. Next, we have Lake Mead near Las Vegas and the stunning Hoover Dam. We all of course know about the historic decline of water levels which has left behind what's known as the bathtub ring around Lake Mead. Our journey continues south along the Arizona border to another reservoir, Lake Havasu site where a lot of recreational activities occur. And continuing south, we reach Yuma, Arizona. Here it's starting to be a much smaller river because of all the diversions, primarily to smart support agriculture. And then we enter Mexico and the Colorado River drains to the Gulf of California where it's an interesting complex estuary system that's been dramatically altered due to all those water extractions and to support the agriculture which you can see in this satellite imagery in a very arid desert region. With a last segment flowing mostly eastward we have well over 720 degrees of rotation and impressive feet of drainage and something you're not going to see with a dendritic drainage pattern. If I zoom way out we can compare with what I had identified as a most clockwise drainage pattern. That had a similar amount of rotation just the other way around. See my other video on that one. Both of these flow routes are in the western US where there is this broad zone of varied structural controls for forcing rivers to keep changing directions over space. It's pretty neat stuff. See the video description text for methods and sources and thanks for watching.